Now let's talk about moments of inertia. What do we mean by moments of inertia? Well, well moments of inertia is a measure of an object's resistance to change to its rotation. Now, this is something that we observe in everyday life. For example, if I were to rotate the same barbell, same weight, same mass, right? But if the barbells were closer to your hand, it actually becomes easier to rotate. Now, the farther it is, the difficult to rotate, meaning there is more resistance to change in its rotation. Now, there's a great YouTube video um, by another channel that basically demonstrates this in real life scenario. I would highly recommend to go check it out. Okay, I'll link it in the description. So, how do we calculate moments of inertia? Well, it is mass times by the radius squared. What do we mean by the radius squared? Well, it's the distance from the center of rotation. Okay, so now this is for point mass in an idealized case. But in real life, we just sum every point masses together. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to say, okay, this has a point mass at a certain radius, plus this has a point mass at a certain radius, this has a point mass at a certain radius, this has a point mass at a certain radius, and I'm going to add those values up incrementally. Now, this is what we do with something called integral in math. Uh, you will learn that in IB Math HL. Okay, let's do a practice problem. Pause the video and give this a try. Now, there are specific formulas you can use to calculate moments of inertia. And this is because moments of inertia depends on the shape of the object and where the axis of rotation is. So all of these are actually given in your data booklet. So all you have to do is follow what this does, and you'll get the moment of inertia. So as an example, let's do this practice problem. So as I told you, moments of inertia, I have to add them up, right? So first, I'm going to find the moment of inertia of the barbell section, the bar section. And the bar section is going to be equal to, well, I have to use a rod about center. Okay, so starting with the bar portion. Okay, now I'm going to do the, the ball portion. I'm going to treat them as point mass. So there's two of them, so I have to multiply by two. Zero point four nine. So the total inertia moments of inertia is zero point five zero. Okay, calculate the percentage that the rod contributes to the overall moment of inertia of the system. Well, that's just simply equal to this, which is equal to 2%, okay? Now, the reason why we care about moments of inertia, right, is because we use it in torque calculation, okay? Now, the formula for the net torque is given by moments of inertia times by its acceleration, okay? Now, why does moments of inertia matter in torque? Well, let's go back to what it was, right? I said that if the moment of inertia is higher, then it's difficult to rotate, meaning I need more torque to rotate. If it's easier to rotate, then I need less torque to rotate, which means that moments of inertia and torque is something that works in proportionality. And we see this in this formula. Now, I hope you found something that's similar to this because we do have that the net force, when it's linear, is equal to mass times acceleration. Exactly, so they're very, very close to each other. I just replaced the acceleration, linear acceleration with rotationary acceleration and mass with moments of inertia. And you're going to see this repeating pattern all the time. For everything that we saw as mass, we're going to change it to moments of inertia when we want to do rotation mechanics. Okay, so let's do a practice problem. Okay, so a couple works like a driving wheel, right? I'm going to apply a linear force of 26 Newton they're separated by 8.7, which means that it is 8.7 divided by 2, 4.35 centimeter on each side. I have the same thing from this side. So they work together. So you have to add them up. So that's two of them. Okay. And I get the torque is equal to 2.26 Newton meter, right? And then I can find that acceleration is equal to torque over I, which is equal to C 
0 0.13 rat per second squared. Let's do another one. So we know the net torque is equal to 14 minus 6.1, which is 7.9 newton meter. Okay, so angular, angular acceleration is equal to torque divided by I, which is equal to Six point five eight rad per second squared. Okay, show that the total angular displacement after two seconds is about two rotations. So initial is zero, acceleration is six point five eight, and time is equal to two point zero seconds. Okay, so I want to find this. So let's use this guy. And I'm going to get 13.2 radians. Okay, now I'm going to cover something called angular momentum. Okay, and angular momentum works similar to linear momentum. In linear momentum, we had mass times velocity. So if I were to just replace mass with moments of inertia and linear velocity with angular velocity, I get angular momentum. Okay. Now, angular momentum works in a very similar fashion. There has to be a conservation of angular momentum. I'm going to show you by using this as an example. Okay, so pause the video and try this video. Uh, try this question. So first, we have to calculate the moment of inertia of the disk. Okay, so yeah. so first, the disk's formula is equal to one over two m r squared. You're gonna see this uh, right here. Which one do you use? You use this one, one over two m r squared. So 1 over 2 mr squared, that's going to be equal to 0 0.004 kilogram per meters, uh, kilogram meters squared. Okay. Okay. After adding the mass, what do I get? Well, I have to add this 0 0.004 with this 500 gram that is dropped at six centimeters. So I have to do MR squared. Zero point zero zero five five kilogram meter squared. Okay. Now what's happening? Well, first it's rotating at four point seven, right? So the initial system's angular momentum is equal to zero point zero zero four times it by four point seven. But this also has to be equal to the final angular momentum, and the final angular momentum is equal to the final i times it by its angular velocity. Now we do already know this because it's this guy. So all I have to do is, re is rearrange, all I have to do is rearrange it and I get 3.41 rad per second or just 3.4 rad per second. And this seems reasonable because the heavier it's going to slow it down, right? If I place something, it's going to slow it down. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about angular impulse. Angular impulse is very similar to angular, uh, to just normal linear impulse. I just replace it with the same thing, but with angular quantities. So I had force times time. I'm just going to change it with torque times time. And that's what I get. Now the usefulness of this is very similar to what we had before, is interpretation of the graph. If I have a torque time graph, then multiplying these two is going to give me the angular impulse, which means the area under the curve is the angular impulse. So let's first determine the angular impulse. The area here is four, the area here is four. So I get that angular impulse is equal to eight. Eight. Uh, so I get the angular So I get that the angular impulse is equal to eight. Now, if this impulse accelerated an object already rotating at 25, calculate the final angular velocity. 
So initial velocity is 25 rad per second. I don't know the final. Moment of inertia is 0.51. Okay, now angular impulse is also equal to the moment of inertia times by the change in angular velocity, which is essentially the same thing as WF minus WI. Okay, so I already know the impulse to, the, the impulse to be 8. So I get WF minus 25. Okay, so I get that 8 is equal to 0 0.51. 40.69, around 41 rad per second squared. Okay? Okay, last but not least, I'm going to talk about rotational kinetic energy. When we have a ball rolling on the ground, there has to be some kinetic energy. One, that is linear kinetic energy which is just the ball traveling at a certain velocity, but it's also rolling at the same time. So there has to be something called a rotational kinetic energy, right? And that is given by, well, the same thing. We replace mass with moment of inertia and velocity with angular velocity, and that's it. So let's do a practice problem. Its linear velocity is as very simple, mv squared, which is equal to 1 over 2, 1, 3, 4, 0, 12 squared. That's going to give me 96,480 joules, okay? Okay, let's draw the wheels, right? At wheels, it has a radius of 29 centimeter. Its linear velocity has to be the same thing as a car, right? So I can actually get that W is equal to V over R, which is equal to 12 over... 29 times 10 power of negative 2, 41.4 rad per second. Okay? So, determine its rotational kinetic energy. Well, I have four wheels. Well, I have four wheels, so I'm going to multiply this by 1 over 2 iw squared, which is equal to 4 times 1 over 2, 0 0.59, 41.4 squared. 41, 41.4 squared, which is equal to 2,020 joules. So the total is going to be equal to 98.5 kilojoules. Okay? Okay, let's do another practice problem. So in this one, we're rotating down. So when a ball travels down the slope, it has an MGH, a gravitational potential energy, and that's going to transfer into linear kinetic energy as well as rotation. Before, we didn't take into account rotations, but at the HO level, you have to take into account the rotational kinetic energy, which means that MGH is going to turn into kinetic energy, linear kinetic energy, and its angular kinetic energy, right? But we also know that the moment of inertia of a solid sphere is equal to 2 over 5 mR squared. So I can rewrite this. Like that, right? Now, you're going to notice that all sides has mass, so I can actually just cancel that out. And I can also replace velocity with angular velocity, okay? So last, I'm going to get simplified. Like that, okay? Now, if I were to combine these two, I get... Okay, and now I can just solve for W. Okay, so I get that the radi the so I get that the angular velocity is thirty seven point four radians per second. Now it's easier to find B.
Okay, we're going to end it here. Check the next video because we have a past paper problem that we're going to go over together. It is quite complex, but that is the expectation of what you need to know for the exam. So if you want to test where you're at uh, after studying, watch the next video and see how difficult it is. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you find these really useful, then consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. For questions, leave them down below in the comment and we'll try to get back to you. For more academic resources, visit our website at novaedgeacademics.com. We offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring service as well as college admission strategy. Uh, let us know what you'd like us to cover next and we'll see you in the next video.